President Trump arrived at the World Economic Forum in Davos just about an hour ago. He is joined by several key cabinet members, including Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao. Now, the president is talking about a $1.7 trillion investment in infrastructure. That's a lot more than the $1 trillion than we had anticipated. I spoke with Elaine Chao about that. Uh, it's reportedly going to cost much more than we expected. We began with the future of self-driving cars and how the government plans to cope with new technology and how it's investing in it. I'm concerned about the safety of our transportation system, the infrastructure, the aging infrastructure, and then also preparing our country to face the future. And the transformative nature of technology in transportation is very exciting, but it also uh, cautions us to address issues about safety, security, accessibility, and also privacy. So we are now seeing self-driving cars at a stage two level, level two, and we are beginning to see ex increased experiment, you know, increased um, pilot programs, and how we can increase automated driving systems to make them safer, to help them, teach them how to drive in urban areas with crowded uh, scenes. So these are important transformational changes that is impacting the transportation sector. How soon before we actually see driverless cars on the road as a norm? I think it will come not as fast as some people would say, but sooner than many of us expect. So in terms of why we're looking at, you know, automated driving systems, there are two major reasons. One is safety. 94% of accidents occur because of human error. If we can reduce the human error, we can actually increase safety on our roads. And then also the second issue is accessibility. You know, if we look at uh, the elderly, it's an increasingly aging population worldwide, and also people with disabilities. If they're able to access automated driving systems, self-driving cars, they will reclaim their freedom. So in terms of their quality of life, it is wonderful. But what about error when it comes to technology? What about all of the hacks? How do we know that we're not going to get into one of these self-driving cars and someone has completely hacked the car and we're going somewhere else? Well, you make a very good point. And that's where the security comes in. Because, uh, as you mentioned, if, if any, any way the, the computer system is compromised, uh, then that presents... Um, a very large issue, uh, not only on our roads, but potentially in terms of se uh, security, because each one of the cars will become a weapon. So we need to address legitimate issues about safety concerns, privacy concerns, security uh, concerns as well. On a government level, what do you see getting accomplished in terms of self-driving cars? Is it the regulatory part of it, or is this a partnership between private and public uh, in terms of creating this new industry? Well, we as the regulators have a very, a very uh, important role in fostering this new emerging technology. My role is to ensure that government acts responsibly, and that means to promote the uh, creativity and the innovation which gave rise to this technology, and to make sure that it remains a part of who we are as uh, Americans, because the innovation and the creativity is very much uh, our preeminent competitive advantage overseas. But we also need to make sure that those issues about that we just mentioned about security, about safety, are also addressed. Which is why you have directed the department to seek input from yes. the private sector. So, in fact, uh, we have put out uh, on January 10th uh, a new several, four, Requests for, requests for information, because we are not the fountain of all wisdom. So we have asked the public and the, sh uh, you know, the various stakeholders to give us their views on what is hampering innovation and creativity and uh, you know, new ideas in the transportation sector in terms of these new technologies. We have also put out a new guidelines. It's called uh, A Vision for Safety 2.0, in which uh, we have voluntary guidelines to the states, which are also proceeding with regulating on their own. And uh, I'm afraid that uh, there may be a patchwork of state regulations on automated driving systems. So we want to we make sure that we're in partnership with the states, that we're sharing best practices, and that uh, we're all regulating or pursuing the common goal 
of preserving innovation while protecting safety in a responsible way. Well, you make a good point because some of these rules are really outdated and yes. antiquated, right? I mean, it, whether it be the rulemaking or it's obviously the regulation. Um, 13 years just to approve a bridge in Bayonne, New Jersey. You just told Actually, me another horrible bad. story. Yeah, tell and me. That is bad enough already, but I was just uh, in Alaska and I actually gave approval to build a bridge, Sterling Highway, and the approval was 35 years in the making. How does that so, happen, Secretary? I mean, this is ridiculous. Well, it is beyond belief. And the Hoover Dam was uh, built in four years. So we have to do something with the permitting process, which gives rise to the building of our infrastructure. And that's another very important initiative that we are taking throughout the whole government, the, across 15 to 16 different agencies. And, and, and when would you expect that to come to completion? When can we actually see this rulemaking loosen up? Well, we hope that people are seeing it on an incremental basis, but it'll be part of the infrastructure proposal. The State of the Union will be January 30th, and the uh, infrastructure proposal will finally come out. One of the reasons why it hasn't come out is because there's been disagreement about how to pay for it. And uh, so we're thinking about a trillion dollars in overall spending, $200 billion in direct government funding uh, minimum, and then the rest will be public-private partnerships. Uh, so many states don't allow the private sector from participating in the building of public infrastructure. And yet private pension funds are among the greatest sources of financing for public infrastructure. So we are working with the states to remove some of the barriers there and then also with the new infrastructure proposal. We hope to address this issue as so well. So this will be the next big priority out of this administration, infrastructure? Well, we hope so. Yeah. You know, I don't know how you deal with some of these disagreements. I mean, we just saw the government shut down. Congratulations to your husband, I mean, really, for standing firm to make sure that, that uh, uh, you got the government to open again. How hard was that, by the way? Well, the, you know, the majority in the Senate and the House never wanted to close the government. It was a minority that insisted on closing the government on a very um, narrow issue, which the president has already said needs to be addressed by the Congress uh, before, uh, before mid-year. So the particular issue about uh, DACA will be addressed. It will be addressed by the Congress. And um, so that was the part of the reassurance. But the minority in the Congress was willing to shut down the government on that. That's pretty extraordinary. I mean, and, and actually, mm. when all was said and done, Chuck Schumer just yesterday said, forget about the deal on, on the wall. Well, I am hoping that on infrastructure, that that will give us a, a chance to be bipartisan. Because we want the infrastructure bill to be a bipartisan effort. Currently, there is great disagreement as to how to, f how to fund it. So, as I mentioned, the Republicans... Uh, are, are saying that uh, we will put $200 billion uh, of the $1 trillion, let the private sector come in, because there's a lot of money in the private sector. And um, the Democrats are saying that they want 100 percent financing of the $1 trillion, which obviously would be an incredible deficit spending proposal, and it would... Uh, it would create some havoc also with the private uh, markets as but well. But why? Why wouldn't you want private companies to, to think, be involved in this? I think private companies can participate, yeah. and we should uh, allow them to participate, because uh, there are many private pension funds that are looking for long-term investments, and uh, they want investments that will not walk away, and certainly a road or a bridge will not walk away.